Hey everybody, I'm Hamza Kramza, and today we'll finally be covering the very infamous Huang Siege and Monk Rush build. This build has its namesake after the very infamous Vietnamese 2K player named Huang, who has made it to the top 50 doing almost one build exclusively. Today, we'll be taking a closer look at this build and show you how to Huang Rush all on your own. Hope you enjoy! This build has been requested pretty frequently across YouTube, Reddit, and Discord alike, so it feels good to finally get around to making this video. Now, as for some background, for those of you who don't know too much about Huang, he's regularly featured on T90's channel and is famous for primarily doing only two things on ladder to reach 2k. Endless militia spam into a relatively fast castle, and a drush fast castle into a siege monk night rush to apply some very heavy pressure. The speedy militia, extra powerful siege, and strong Celtic economy make this build very hard to deal with as a defender. Now, it's a bit disingenuous to say that Huang only does these two builds, because Huang is an artist. Every game he may do the same build, but with small, beautiful variations that allow him to win games. As far as the build itself goes, this one is going to be pretty difficult, and confusing at times, and I've had my fair share of troubles practicing it. He's so terrible. Oops. Oh god, this is a full-on disaster. I think it will be more important to understand the whys of this build rather than the literal build order itself, since I can't capture all the small tricks that Huang does, and he rarely plays the exact same game twice in a row. But that being said, if you want to look at some footage of his playstyle and his build, check out his YouTube channel in the description, or his stream on Twitch. Now, that was a lot of talking for me, so the only thing left to do is show you how. Let's go get it. Alright, so let's get started. And the first thing we're going to do is start out standard as m we mostly always do. And we're going to build our two houses and follow that up with sending the first six villagers to sheep. Now, just as a heads up, this video is going to be a little bit different um, as far as how we're going to keep track of the amount of villagers on each resource. So usually the way I will format it is I'll take the total population and then just tell you what population villager goes on to, you know, resource. So for instance, like wood, instead of, it would be the seventh villager, but it would be the eighth population. So I would say eight through 11. Here, I'm just gonna go by villagers because we are gonna be producing militia to go and drush our opponent. And if I use population, it won't really work. So um, the first six villagers, we're gonna put onto the uh, sheep there or the cows in this case. And then we're gonna send the next four over to our wood line. Now, it's kind of important to talk about a few of the subtleties of what we need to, you know, kind of, uh, you know, go after here. So we're going to actually lure one of our boars a little bit early because we need that extra food intake early on so that we can initiate our drush or our Celtic drush really early. Now, we're going to build, so we're going to send one of those uh, cow villagers or the sheep villagers over to the boar to go and lure it and then we're going to start eating from that boar. So this took two cows, but usually take about three sheep. So um, once your third sheep expires, you should be eating your first boar. Now, this is really important. And if you don't do this, it's still possible to actually carry out the early drush. But the problem is you're going to run into some really, really tight food shortages. And this is going to help you a lot with that. So we are going to kill that boar and make sure that we are harvesting the board from here. We're going to send the 11th villager uh, to go and lure uh, or put it onto the board rather. And then we're going to send our 12th villager over to go and build our first house. Now, uh, this opening is kind of commonly referred um, to as a barracks before mill opening, which allows us to do a really early drush. Um, but Celts do it best here because they're going to have that strong, strong uh, wood bonus there for the 10% extra on uh, the gather rate of our wood. So we're going to send the 13 through 15 bills, or, or the 13th and 15th bill, um, 13, 14th and 15th bill, sorry, onto our boar. And we're going to lure one of our boars here at some point once we see that our boar is getting low over there. And we're going to build a barracks with the villager who is building the first house wall. So we're off to a really strong start here, right? Like, what we want to do is um, punch our opponent in the mouth as quickly as possible, so that that way they can't really wall, they can't 
you know, react to um, this early pressure that we're going to send, and they're going to have to build like either uh, militia of their own, um, or they're going to have to quick wall and waste a lot of wood and resources, and especially at lower uh, tiers, they're going to have to waste a lot of APM. So APM is a resource, just like you know, gold is a resource and food is a resource. So the more of that you can deplete from your opponent early on, is the more likely he's going to be distracted from actually. Um, you know, uh, winning his battles. So we're gonna send the 17th uh, villager over to uh, the berries and we're gonna build a mill there. And also we sent our 16th villager over to gold. Now, that villager over to gold is really flexible. So sometimes I see Huang send it much later. Sometimes I see him do it much earlier. And the other part of that is too, sometimes he'll send, you know, maybe three villagers over to that gold. But the main thing here and the main thing that you need to think about is why am I sending those villagers over to gold? So Huang will usually do this if he sees his opponent is going into a drush of their own, and he'll want to outdrush them per se. So um, he'll like if his opponent has three militia, he wants to be able to fight that and win it using his uh, four or five militia. So that's why he'll go to gold there, and he'll always delay loom. One of the really curious things to see about Huang's playstyle is he'll delay loom really late, and only build it when it's uh, really necessary there. Um, but and, and only really if he sees pressure. And the reason he can do that is he can see the pressure coming from his opponent um, because he has his militia in their base. Now, I'm gonna try and uh, not use my militia too much here um, because I want, like one of the problems I had when I was setting this build from Huang was uh, following you know where he was sending his villagers and that's because he's so active with his militia. So really you would wanna be very active with your militia. You wanna be really on top of things. Um, but here I'm just going to be, you know, very lightly active with them and that way you can kind of like uh, keep track of how the economy is rolling behind the drush that you're putting here. Now, the most important thing um, with that drush is that you're just delaying. So, you know, normal uh, drush things apply and, you know, if you have uh, the opportunity to kill some bills, then kill some bills. But we're going to send uh, a few villagers over to wood and then we're going to build two farms here and this way we're not overcrowding on our uh, uh, food resources underneath the TC and underneath our, our cows. And also that's gonna give us a, you know, a stable uh, food income that we can, you know, kind of rely on. So, you know, deer are gonna expire, our cows are gonna expire, but our sheep should be good there. And I accidentally double click here, and this is kind of tragic, but we'll make a comeback from here. So now I'm thinking about clicking up, right? So. Realistically, in a, in a real game here, I think I actually would have clicked up at around 26 fills because I haven't received any type of pressure and, um, you know, I don't, I feel like I didn't need to kind of delay this long. And also, like, maybe if I, you know, wall earlier, then I don't really need to go into militia, right? So I could just wall early and then he's pressing with his militia, doesn't matter, I don't care because I'm just going to go into um, some really strong. Uh, variations uh, of my own and just go straight castle into the siege. So uh, as the Swang Rush, uh, you know, progresses, the m most important thing you need to worry about and, um, you know, keep track of is how is your opponent doing? Like, are they going to be able to pressure you very hard and feudal? Are they going to be able to, you know, uh, kill you before you can actually reach castle age and apply that pressure with your siege? Are you going to die before then? And you just need to focus on not dying. Now, Huang is a master of this, and, um, you know, he is, like, really... The, the One of the biggest things and one of the biggest variations, um, or one of the biggest uh, things that I've picked up from watching his playstyle, is that he is... His variations just allow him to survive during the course of his build, right? So... It doesn't matter if he goes up at 30 villagers. It doesn't matter if he goes up at, you know, 26 villagers. What really matters is, is he going to be able to put significant pressure on once he reaches castle? And if he can't do that, then he delays. And that's perfectly fine with him, right? So um, I hope you're able to follow along with uh, some of the instructions that were on screen there because I kind of neglected them a bit just to talk on some of those points. But um, we're going to build our blacksmith and our stable as soon as we... Uh, click up or as soon as we reach castle age here and now really importantly uh you're gonna want to build a stable right so i make this mistake all the time 
and I'll actually build a, a market instead of a stable, but um, that's just me. So we're going to send all the villagers who expired on berries, and we're going to send them over and build a lumber camp, and this should be able to sustain, you know, our siege workshop production as well as, uh, you know, building the monastery and the siege workshop in the first place. One of the important things you need to know um, as well is that your siege bonus um, doesn't just apply to faster firing rates, right? So Celts also have a siege bonus for, um, you know, the fact that their siege workshops produce 20% faster. So because they produce 20% faster means that you're really going to want to, you know, uh, have enough wood to actually sustain that production there. And you're also going to want some of the gold, but right now I think that the wood is, is more important there. Now, you are going to need some people on food, and uh, I would actually suggest, like, I'd say seven to eight farms in, in normal drush fashion, and, uh, you know, kind of roll with that. But one of the things that I do here that Huang doesn't do is he'll actually skip the double bit axe and he'll skip, uh, you know, gold shaft mining. And I believe I get both of those in this variation here. Now, I don't agree with this decision, but. Uh, I think, you know, Huang is a is a 2.1k player and maybe he knows something that I don't, but um, I just like to go for those because usually I'll have the resources to actually get those and um, it won't affect my uptime or anything like that. So, and I figure if I'm going to have, you know, 13 people on wood, then I should have a uh, double bit axe. So I'm going to send a villager forward here. I definitely send it late. Um, one of the biggest regrets here is um, sending it that late and honestly, uh, I've done this build so many times uh, now and I've messed up so many times that at this point I was too dedicated to do a restart. But um, here you're definitely going to want to send a villager a lot earlier so that you can have that siege workshop building right as you reach castle and right in their face. So um, yeah, just to just kind of recap there, the important points, right? You know, once you reach, uh, you know, castle age, you're going to want to build your uh, monastery and your siege workshop and then produce a mangonel. And if he has archers, Maybe build two, um, you know, scorpions instead of a mangonel. Um, if he has a lot of knights, uh, or if he reaches castle before you and he has knights, um, you're definitely going to want to go for a monastery first so you can convert. And, uh, you know, you're going to want to play this very situationally. So, uh, you know, I got a little sidetracked there, but um, you're definitely going to want to, um, you know, uh, some of the key points here is just reaching castle age comfortably. It doesn't matter if your opponent reaches Castle Age before you, it matters that you reach it comfortably and that you're not in immediate danger at home where, you know, if you click Castle, then you're dead, right? So um, one of the things that I see Huang do a lot, so let's say this was Arabia and we were being pressured from or onto our gold. Huang will, won't even think twice about building a tower to actually go and defend his uh, gold line. And if he sees, you know, a lot of pressure or he sees another exposed uh, wood line or something like that that's really going to cause him a lot of damage he'll go and gather the extra you know 50 gold to build the second tower or 50 stone rather so you know just survive to castle and once you reach castle you know uh, make sure that you're applying the pressure from the get-go one of the other thing is too and you're going to see it here i believe is i'm going to be floating around a lot of resources and i see huang even do this right like it's not ideal you never want to do it but huang the reason why he's floating so many resources generally when you watch some of his replays is because he's extremely micro intensive. He's paying attention to how his units are, are living and surviving because your units right now mean more than, you know, uh, an extra two villagers at home or taking care of your macro or what have you. So always focus on the micro of your forward uh, attack rather than, you know, the economy back at home. And I know that's kind of maybe even uh, bad advice to an extent, but I would say uh, in this strategy, your micro is actually more important than your macro. And uh, again, uh, Huang's uh, rating kind of attests to that. So, you know, if your opponent is building a lot of, um, you know, knights, then you're gonna wanna build more of your monks and uh, so on and so forth. One of the things as well that I see uh, Huang doing is sometimes he'll uh, stop producing villagers to actually just build some spearmen and he'll send those forward. So one of his priorities is to protect his, uh, you know, monks after he produces them. So it definitely makes sense and it's something that you might want to do for yourself and I just wanted to mention it there. So that is the Huang rush for you all. I know playing against the extreme AI isn't ideal and it's better to show the build versus an actual opponent, 
but for this build that would have caused too many small variations for a beginner to actually learn something. So um, decided to actually go and put it against the AI. That being said, if you have any tips or notice something I missed for the build, please let me know and I'll pin it in the comments down below. And lastly, huge shout out, huge, huge shout out to the first patron of the channel, Tercer Queso. Thanks man, I really appreciate the support and I'll try to do what I can to keep the channel going. And for everybody else, that's all for this video and until next time, have a great day.